this is a statistical finding. It's a very strong statistical finding and meets you know all the criteria for for being highly significant and is actually a, a large effect, a twofold increased risk if you have one copy of the variant. If you have two copies, if you inherit it from both mom and dad, it's almost a fourfold increased risk um, for sudden death, which is which is fairly substantial. Um, so the next step in, is that we're going to be working on is, is character in identifying the gene and ultimately what is the functional variant that's having its effect. Is it changing the expression of the gene? Uh, is it altering where the gene is expressed? Is it altering the timing that the gene is expressed in the heart? Things like that. So those are the, the, que the next set of questions um, is to understand how it's having its effect because in theory you'd love to be able to understand that so you could potentially modify uh, the, the effect that that variant is, is having. So it's a, it's, a, it's a single nucleotide polymorphism, which means it's a single base pair change in the sequence of DNA. So you have your A, C, G, T, whatever the sequence is. This is a single change at one site. And in this case, what we find is that the variant that's associated with risk for sudden death um, is actually the variant that was found, is the same variant found in chimp and gorilla sequence, um, suggesting that it's actually the ancestral allele or the allele that was actually found common in our, sh in our shared common ancestor. Um, and that suggests, now that it's gone down from being everyone has that allele to only 1.4% of people with European ancestry, that there's some negative pressure against that allele, that it's being slowly lost um, from the population. Um, so that's, that's one way we can get it to sort of another piece of evidence that this is actually irrelevant to diseases. We can show that evolutionarily there's a reason that it's leaving the population. In our case, uh, the suggestion is it's increasing risk for sudden death events, which obviously is, is not so good for you. It's, it's certainly, it's one of the leading causes of mortality in, in the U.S. It's, it's a major killer. Um, and unfortunately, if you look at data, we've done a great job of treating coronary disease and reducing the risk of heart attacks. We really have had very little progress um, in reducing risk for sudden death. Um, and I think part of that is, is we don't know really what to look for yet in terms of what are clinical signs that say this person is at risk. Um, most of the time when someone has a sudden death event, two-thirds of the time we did not have enough information to warrant any sort of intervention in that person. Um, so they wouldn't have even come to the attention of their physician to, to do anything about before the sudden death event. And only about 10% of people survived their initial sudden death event. Um, so I think it, the, finding some mechanism where you could screen broadly like genetics um, is really going to be critical for that because we don't have other measures that will do a good job of identifying people.